The Rebel Capitalist Show. Let's talk about money creation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that most people, they have um, just a very poor understanding of how this actually works. Well, I would say the entire banking system. So yep. what, what do most people get wrong about money or the creation of money? And yeah. then, uh, how should they think about it? Well, I was actually just thinking about our, uh, you know, our talk, recent talk. Um, one thing that came to mind was the, the observation, if somebody's telling you about money and they don't explain it or they can't explain it using double entry bookkeeping, shut them up. They don't know what they're talking about because money is fundamentally a creature of double entry bookkeeping. So if you want to see how money is created, first we've got to define money accurately and people say gold is money, well shut them down as well unless you can go shopping at the local supermarket and find all the prices nominated in grams of gold, which of course you can't. Um, equally Bitcoin, etc., etc. Yes, money these days, they may take the place of money, but at the moment the money we use is money created by banks or money created by the government. And to understand it, you've got to look at the, the banking sector and the double entry uh, framework. And fundamentally, money, aside from cash, which obviously cash can only be created by uh, by the federal by federal government, money is fundamentally the liability of the banking sector to the public. Right. Okay. okay that's money. So when you say you know, how money is created and destroyed, you must be giving an explanation how the liabilities of the banking sector are increased or decreased. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing that, you're bullshitting. And I've just recently seen a new article by uh, Greg Mankiw and, and one other uh, where they're explaining. Uh, why government spending can crowd out the private sector and their private sector is a bunch of yeomen, yeoman farmers. Mm. I mean, give me a break. Um, and it's all about effectively they're, what they're, their money is effectively a form of corn. Uh, no, that is corny. That is not money. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so really, I think the, the biggest hurdle for people and maybe you can explain this. Mm. It, they, they believe they have, they see money as though it is a gold coin. Mm -hmm. uh, going back, let's go back to the 1800s with mm -hmm. the American banking system. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> started off with something called free banking, which uh, isn't necessarily just free of charge. It's uh, free of, of government long shot. intervention uh, for the mm -hmm. most part, where you would give your gold coin to the bank and they would store it for you, let's say in a vault, and then they would uh, create an IOU. We had fractional reserve banking. That was something of the free market. Most people think that, uh, you know, in the free market would just have full reserve banking. That's not quite true. So they would uh, issue these IOUs and they have a, a reserve requirement and each bank was a little bit different. A lot of the banks issued their own currency. And so this was kind of this free reserve or, or um, free banking, excuse me. But it was based on these gold coins that the banking system would have, and then they would uh, lend those out in full reserve, or they would create IOUs, you know, paper IOUs, currency, if you will. But it was backed by this uh, gold coin they had in the vault. And I think most people still see banking that way, where, where they uh, wire their $100,000 to Bank of America and then they assume Bank of America takes that hundred thousand dollars they just wired them, and then lends it out to someone else to purchase a house, and keeps uh, ten percent in reserve. So they lend out ninety percent. Mm -hmm. So uh, why is that inaccurate? And and if someone believes that, what's the problem there? Like like how does that take them down a path to where they don't really understand uh, the banking system? and the way the economy really works. Well, they're leaving out the capacity of banks to create money without needing reserves in the first place. Uh, and again, uh, when people think they lend from reserves, I mean, you'll, I literally, I've seen that in, in minutes of the Federal Reserve. So I know that's what members of the Federal Reserve Board or with PhDs in economics think wow. is actually what's going on. And when you, when you look at it in double entry bookkeeping terms, it is simply impossible to lend from reserves unless you lend off balance sheet in cash. That's the only way that the fractional reserve banking system so-called actually works. And that's again why I say if you can't explain it using double entry bookkeeping, you can't explain it at all. And when you put full, what is seen as fractional reserve banking, even full reserve banking, 
you put that into um, into the framework of double entry bookkeeping, it doesn't make sense. And uh, it might be best. We talked about uh, uh, sharing my screen to illustrate some of the stuff. Would that help if I could do that right now? Sure. You want to give it a shot? Yeah, give it a try. Here we go. So I go to share screen. This is a software package I've designed called Minsky. Yeah. Uh, named after Hyman Minsky, of course. And what it what it does is lets you model the financial system using double entry bookkeeping. So let's see, if I and what what I can do is I can say I can just if I create an asset called reserves, for example, and another asset called loans. Okay. And then I have a, li a liability. Say I have got one bunch here I call savers, and another bunch I call borrowers. And I just want to then, point out, Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but the liability in this case, we could also say that it's a, a deposit. It's, it's a consumer deposit. So your checking yeah. account or your savings account at your local bank is a liability of the bank. So that's if you're right. a saver, yeah. you've got, uh, you know, your $100 in the bank, that's your asset, but it's the bank's liability. So another way yeah. to a liability is a, is a deposit of the commercial banking system. So I'm, I'm going to have a save a deposit of 100 here, which means you get 100 put down into reserves. And that's the sort of situation people often think banks start from. And then I can say, well, let's lend money. You know, let's, let's lend money to the borrower. So you're going to lend money to the borrower. You've got to put some lend money in here. Okay, that's gone up. So, okay, well, let's, uh, let's have a, you're going to take the money and lend from the um, reserves. Uh, only look over here. What Minsky is doing is imposing what's called the fundamental law of accounting, that assets minus liabilities minus equity equals zero. Uh, so every row you see must sum to zero. And what it's telling me here, I'm sorry, this is double counting. It's not letting go creating to zero at all. Um, you, if you want to show lending going on like that, then what you've got to do is this, and say reserves go down and loans go up. But the only way that's going to happen, and the borrower then going to, let's say we have pay interest on loan. So the borrower is now going to pay interest out of here and pay it to the bank. So that's working. But when you look at it, why on earth is somebody paying interest and they haven't got any money? The only way you can make sense of it it's to say, well, the loan has been taken out as cash. So I come over here and I then say, let's look at the system from the point of view of the, the borrower here, who's now got a loan, which is negative. The only way this makes sense, if they have cash, uh, which, they've, which they've taken out of the bank, and I'll just call this cash of the uh, borrower. Yeah, or cash or a gold coin. I mean, if you or think about coin, it, it's, it's a coin, yeah. 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 Okay, so now if you do that, then yes, they got the loan, uh, but they've got the loan in cash. Now, uh, you were giving an example earlier of the old uh, wildcat banks, as they were called. And yes, uh, in some cases they would lend, you know, you'd go and take a loan and get their notes out the door. Um, that's the sort of system you need to allow banks to create money by, mm. uh, by reserve lending. But these yeah. days, what we do is you simply pay money straight to the borrower. You put money in their account, and what mm. then happens is the loans go up by the amount lend, the interest goes, the amount of money in the bank account goes up by lend. So right. you, you create the money. You don't need to even touch the reserves. Right. So right. that that is. I'll now get rid of the. I've got the thing up as cash over here. This would actually be um, the borrower's account. So I'd actually whack the borrower's account inside there. That's not going to give me an error there, so I've got to get rid of this one, okay? And then you're paying the interest out of here, okay? So that's now that's now accountingly correct. Those those two tables make sense, but what they're doing is they're showing lending and money creation and paying interest without involving reserves. So when you look at what what's this idea about fractional reserve banking? It's another textbook myth. Okay, it's another way the textbook tries to tell you that money is created in such a way that they can ignore money in their economic theory. Or they can ignore the importance of the commercial banking system. Yeah, completely. I mean, if you look at any mainstream neo, mainstream neoclassical economic model, certainly before the financial crisis in 2008, had no banks, no money, and no private debt in them. Hmm. They thought that was a model of capitalism. No. It's a, it's a model of a funny system existing on another planet, which we don't happen to inhabit. 
Yeah. Um, but what it means is in that world, they can say, well, the government controls money creation by deciding how many reserves to create and setting a, 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 a required reserve ratio. And that's their explanation of money creation. And then using that explanation, Ben Bernanke blamed the, the, the uh, Great Depression on the Federal Reserve, not creating enough money, um, which looks plausible um, when you, you, know, you hear people demonising the Federal Reserve. And I'm certainly not again people demonising the Federal Reserve, I might add. So you're um, talking to a guy that's wearing an end the Fed hat. <laughs> <laughs> I can see. Um, it's, you need a clearing house, but you don't need a vacuum cleaner like the Fed, uh, which sucks in more ways than one. Let's keep the pun going. Um, but uh, because they're run by mainstream economists. But it, it's a textbook model. It's not the real world. And so what we have people is, a lot of people like, you know, a Mich Mich Shedlock, for example, who's a good mate of mine. Mish is the other end of the political spectrum for me. Uh, if you know Ms. Shedlock, um, but, but he, he was criticising fractured reserve banking all the time, saying, mate, it doesn't exist. It's a textbook model. You might as well be tilting at windmills, uh, yeah. which is what it amounts to. So a lot of what we have, a lot of people's criticisms of capitalism and criticisms of the banking sector, the criticisms of textbook manifestations of both that are wrong. Right. right. And, that, and that's the, the, the key takeaway here.